Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. And what we read last night was Habakkuk saying why? Like the book of Job we read. Why is all this happening? Why does God allow it to happen? Verses 5 to 11 that we're going to look at is God's reply. But it does not answer Habakkuk's question. And that's one of the things that happens in life. You're in a situation and you call upon God and you and you seek God and you try to do right and and you get a reply, not an answer. Totally what we believe is off the wall. Not in the ballpark. And what God's reply is, well, the Chaldeans are going to come and there's going to be destruction. Well, wait a minute, I just, Lord, there's violence, there's sin, there's iniquity, there's grievance. The wicked are getting away with things. And God's like, yep, it's going to get worse. And it's hard to believe that there are ministries out there and churches that get up there in whatever kind of pulpit they have or session and everything's hunky great, everything's wonderful. Completely denying the ministry of Paul. Behold ye among the heathen, Gentiles, and regard and wonder marvelously. The Gentiles are in shock. For I, God, will work a work in your day. Speaking to the heathen. Which ye will not believe. Though it be told you. God says, I'm going to do something. And you're not going to believe it. Though you've been told. That's today. There are men and women who go out there and preach the gospel. This is what God done. God suffered and died upon Calvary's cross. And he was buried and he arose again the third day according to scripture. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The next great event in, in, in the future of man is called the rapture. All men are going to die, and you're going to, there is an afterlife. It's heaven by Jesus, it's hell by anything or nothing. And there's a great there's a tribulation period coming seven years. The worldwide leader will be the Antichrist. And then Jesus Christ is going to come back, a thousand year reign of, of, the, of the Jews in the homeland and the law and everything, wonderful and great. The devil's going to be loose for a season, he's going to gather an army, God's going to, you're dead. Then the great white throne judgment. And man does not believe it. And they get this rover. And on Mars, they found this little spaghetti mesh or something. Ooh. You say, Stylo, what do you think? I think it's fake photography. Like, oh, all these kids in India, they're starving to death. Oh, we got to uh, How do you know they're not filming that in L.A., in Los Angeles? I mean, listen, I grew up and I, I like the movie Judd. They made this big mechanical shark eating people and shit. I, I, I think they can make a little spaghetti mound. I think they can dress people to think, make you think they are somewhere where they're really not. People don't believe God. Even... Professing Christians don't believe God. For lo, 
I raise up the Chaldeans. We talked about the Chaldeans last night. They're south of Babylon, and slowly by slowly, they become all of Babylon. They're fierce. We would we was liken them to the Arabians today, the Ishmaelites, the Islam, Koreans, that bitter and nasty nation. Excuse me, hasty nation. They're bitter. They're, they're angry. They get. They think they got a cause, and they're gonna go quick. God says, that's a perfect nation for me to use. And Habakkuk's like, God, why is all this happening? Hold on, I've got one more nation coming. And remember, the Chaldees are going to come in and take Judah captive. What an answer to Habakkuk. All, oh, everything, the crime, the violence, the disruption of justice, and Judas carried off into captivity in the Babylon. And we Americans sit here in 2022 and we expect God to give us an answer. He didn't give Habakkuk one. He didn't give Job. You know, nowhere did anywhere does the Bible say that God said, All right, Job, call your three friends over and uh, I forget the other guy's name. All right, gentlemen, this is Satan. Satan, this is gentlemen. Job, this is the one that all your troubles and problems. Right there, there he is. That didn't happen. God did not say, okay, David, we got that over with, right? Oh, yeah. Come here. You see, you know, I caused you to number Israel. Oh, God, thank you. And Satan caused you to number Israel. What? Oh, well, who do I blame, God or Satan? Okay. What, what? We don't learn that till later on. And I'm not sure when that's written in the Bible that God caused David to number Israel and Satan caused David. I don't know if David was alive when that was written. There are events in the Bible and there are events in our lives. Let's bring Habakkuk today. And you, you, you're leaving there scratching your head. And you say, well, God, you know, I confess every sin. That's good for you. That's what God wanted you. What if it wasn't you? What if it was the devil? What if it was God? What if it wasn't God and it was the devil? What if it wasn't God, was it the devil, or it was you? Now, there are things in life that we do know. My first wife, I don't know where or how she got the breast cancer. We had no idea. One day, there was a lump. We went right along. Everything we needed to do. My second wife with lung cancer, I know why. The woman would not quit smoking. And she'd get mad at me when I prayed about it. And she'd get mad at me when I give her that, that faith. Oh, she's going to go run and get sicker. That's why. That wasn't Satan. That wasn't God. I'm in a serious prayer thing right now. And I, I, I have mentioned every single prayer. Every single sin. God, we just answered this prayer. I, I, have, I, have, I have brought to God the sins of not being a faithful husband, not being a right husband, not being any kind of husband. To two wives. Well, that clears my record. I don't know why it hasn't happened. And God's not obligated. All right, sit down. Let me tell you what's going on. Habakkuk says, hey, why, 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 why? God said, I'm bringing the Chaldeans. That's not the answer I want. And today in America, I you know they're Christians, and I'm not the judge that, but you know, there are things I can. 
we went to a thing of we couldn't have toilet paper. And then we got a thing we had to wear a mask. And COVID-19, well, I don't remember what number it was. And then we'll get shot. We'll get shot again. <laughs> get a third shot. And people struggled with that. And I'm not going to do it. And people gave up their job. People are not working because they don't want to take the shot. Now they go in the grocery store and they're saying that today uh, the grocery stores have all kinds of things besides food. They're not buying all those kinds of things. Food. They're buying food. And they're buying the cheap food. Gee, I wonder in the recession why that would be out. I, I need college idiots to tell me that. And now the gas prices are high. Complaining gas prices are high. What's the problem? Well, wait another question. Uh, they just had a state where they, this massive amount of rain just came and just flooded the whole area. No warning at all. Flash flooding. Fires out west. A war in, in Ukraine and Russia. Driving the grass prices up. We don't even know if we're going to get wheat. In India, we don't even know if they're going to get their wheat because they're mad at somebody. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi's going over China, Japan, whatever it is, and then now they're having air, air raid drills. And they don't like Biden this, and, and Donald Trump is rising up to his power again and all that, and yay. And the other day, a woman pulled a gun out in, in an in a airport, and boom, boom, boom. And then the biggest news is a guy who's, who a preacher gets up there and while he's on Facebook, whatever, I, I just read, read the headlines. His thousand dollars worth of jewelry was stolen. And no one said, wait a minute, what's a preacher doing with a thousand dollars worth of jewelry? That's my question. My question is, is Habakkuk, why are people listening to this man with a thousand dollars worth of jewelry when I've got a message about Jesus Christ and I, I'm lucky if I get five hits? I'm praying for more. For people to hear the Bible. God says, all right, here comes, here comes the Chaldeans. What kind of answer is that? Which shall march through the breadth of the land. <laughs> And possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. That would be Asia and Africa. You want to read, and we're not going to go back to that. Read verses 2 and 3 and 4. To why? Why? What? God, didn't you read the newspaper? Don't you know the current event? Yeah, okay, wait till you see this trouble. Life is a veil of tears. There's no promises of roses and gardens. I would assume if you're going to make a good rose, you got to put some stinky fertilizer. I mean, on our way to church, we pass some farms and horses and cows and all that, and then you smell that manure. Oh, that's good for crops. All that stuff will be shoveled up and put into crops. I'm a vegetarian. If you knew what your vegetarian is being being grown by the animals that you don't eat. <laughs> they are terrible. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Habakkuk says there's violence. There's strife. There's contention. There's no judgment. There's slacking of the law. And, and the wicked do company the righteous. And here comes a terrible, dreadful people. And God's not doing this to sell a newspaper. God's saying, this is what's happening. And the only answer I can give outside of Habakkuk and outside the book of Job is, God told the man named Adam, thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned him. We are talking about Judah right now. God warned the entire nation of Israel with all the law, with Moses, 
with Joshua, with all the judges, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, you are warned. And in America, you got the AM channel, you got the FM channel, you got a church on every street corner, you had street preachers, you got the great good revivals that they came to this country. There's a gospel track in your, the phone, what used to be phone booth, there's a gospel track on the table, there's a gospel track put in your grocery bag, there's a gospel track put on your door, there's a gospel track that's put on your car, your neighbor shows you the Bible, he, 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 this car has bumper stickers. Somebody's invited you to church. You get a cassette tape. You get a CD. You get one of those little plug in your computers. I don't know what those things are. You get on the internet. You get on YouTube. You have heard the word of God. You know the word of God. You've heard the carols. You've heard the hymns. And your rejection as a nation of God and Jesus Christ for the Catholic, for the Methodists, for the Jehovah Witnesses, for the Nazarites, for the Mormons, for the Eastern religions, for the New Age, for the Wicca, for the Atheists, for the Republicans, for the Democrats, whatever gods are out there. Those gods can't give you any hope. And God's saying, watch the power of your gods against me. How can that be? Study the book of Exodus. Every one of those plagues of Egypt was a god of Egypt. And God got to the point with his people, this plague is going to happen to you, Egypt, but it ain't going to happen to my people. How's that? Now, come on. Let's look at it. This is going to happen in the tribulation period. Here is Israel. Here is Egypt. Now, I want you to think about you live in the town or city you're in right now. Okay? You take your neighboring town or city right next to your city where you live. Right now, we live in Daytona Beach. So, it would be Holly Hill or it would be South Daytona. Tonight at midnight, starting at midnight, the sun's going to come up and it's going to light Daytona Beach. But South Daytona and Holly Hill are not going to have no light at all. Even with Daytona Beach being lit, they're not going to have no light. That's what happened in Egypt. God warned him. He said, Moses, Aaron, go tell him. He said, Stiley, go on the streets and tell him. Stiley, leave that gospel track out there. My friend Larry on, 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 the, on Facebook going out there telling people every day about Jesus. I know Israel, a man that's on Facebook, he goes out and goes to all these places where, where, where the Sodomite and all these people meet and all these religions meet. He goes out there with signs and preaches. Tell them. I know a preacher right now. I don't even know if she's still alive. Or I, as soon as I said it, the name went off my head. Janet Reno. I, I haven't heard her name. I don't even know if she's still alive. But I know a preacher that after or during the time of Waco, Texas, he actually grabbed the hand of Janet Reno and gave her the gospel. I have sent letters to every president as far as back to Ronald Reagan in a gospel chat. I don't know. Listen, and I've been bowed in the street many years. I don't know whose hand I've handed in the gospel chat. I don't know whose ears have heard the I know the mayor of Daytona Beach. I, I mean, I, I don't know his name or all that. I don't get involved politics. I never met the guy. The guy knows me. The mayor knows me by name as that loud mouthed guy who screams and hollers. I hope they have enough nerve to tell me he, he hollers about Jesus. They know. 
When the date, when well, we don't do that ministry number, no but when the Daytona police would get that 911 phone call, they get every Saturday about that mouth, mouth, they know we're going to hear that guy, he's going to preach. I don't know why dispatch has got to send two or three police officers. With that. that guy doesn't give us any problems. And if there's a problem, he will walk away and say, listen, if I'm doing right, I'll be back here next week. If I'm not doing right, I apologize. I won't be back. That guy comes back every week because he's doing right. But two or three police officers, that's so they can hear the word of God. That's God saying, hey, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Habakkuk said, Lord, there's trouble. There's problems. God said, okay, here's some more. That's not what I want. You go into the doctor's office and you sit behind his desk and he says, there's nothing we can do. Well, am I going to die? It, you're going to die, yeah, but I mean, what you've got is going to be a lot of pain. I'm sorry to tell you, the government you live in is taking away your pain pill. And then you walk out of his office, somebody has mopped the stairs without putting the sign, and you do a belly flop on the stairs and end up on the floor. Now, now you got broken bones. I know a guy, and I'm not going to mention his name, and I don't mean no disrespect. I'm praying for this man. The man has had his leg removed from his knee. He's ready. They, they said he's ready to get the, the, the artificial leg. The same day he goes to the doctor, or the other doctor, his other foot, we got to take the big toe off. The infection got in the bone. I've had my toes amputated, and the doctor told me one more time my right foot, I lose all my toes. And I have been told by a foot doctor, if you, if you lose your big toe, you will lose your balance. All right, you're going to get an artificial leg, but now they're going to take your other big toe. Guy saved? Well, I'm saved. Isn't this supposed to be good? Is your preacher preaching that? You need to leave. I, I, I left the preacher. I have no worries at all. Really? Well, maybe I'm praying, maybe God give you some worries. Because you can't be a preacher with no worries and deal with people who have worries. Because even Luke is on a ship, ship that's about to be, t we're all going to die. <laughs> This is not the answer. This is life. This is not the answer you want. I knew we're. I know we're going to die. We died too early. Well, they really didn't die too early. But as far as we look at it, all these kids are shooting. All these people are getting killed. Well, wait. What's the problem? You've been murdering babies. You're going to hear within the next near future, the population of America has completely down dropped. Why? Sodomites don't make babies. You don't need a pregnancy test for sodomite. But they'll, get, they'll go after your children. Your children are great danger now. Oh, you're going to trust the school? You want to run by how many teachers have had sexual contact? The children are not allowed and told, don't you tell mommy and daddy what we tell you in this classroom. You think? Parents have been forbidden. I know Christian parents who sent their children here in schools in Florida and say, listen, I'm going to school. I'm bringing a tape recorder because I hear about what you're telling. And the school board said, no, you're not. All right, fine. My son will bring a tape recorder. You can't do that in Florida. That's a felony. 
but Governor, whatever D, whatever his name is, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and open the school rooms to all the parents and grandparents so they can sit there when they want to. Not, oh, okay, we got the Smith family coming on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Behave yourself like you do with the people on welfare. Now, we're going to come next week on Friday, so they're not going to do their drugs for a week. <laughs> or how long? Look at it. Bitter and hasty nation shall march. That is a great definition of the Nazis. That's a great thing for the Russians. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Well, what's their judgment? Kill them. I don't like what he looks like. Kill him. <laughs> look at that pretty woman. Rape her. Oh, look at that woman. She's pregnant. Rip it out. You're going to be my slave. You remember David's on the run and where they were, I forget the name of the city, but they had been attacked and all the women and children and goods had been taken. And they go and say, listen, we're going to get our wives. We're going to rescue our, our family. And they come across, I believe it was an Ethiopian man. And they say, well, what? yeah, we, we, belong, we belong to this enemy army. Well, why are you here? Well, I got sick. The guy got sick, and the, and the military said, leave him behind. Friend, that's the future of America. That's the future of the Antichrist. I'm sick. My baby said he needs to Where's your mark? I don't have the mark. No, no mark. No. Uh, what, wait, what's it say? No, no shirt, no shoes, no service. Right? How about this one? You ready? You ready? Let's bring up the. Ready? No mask, no entry. That mask prepared you for the Antichrist. And all the world looks at, hey, you know what? There's some people who didn't wear their mask. There's some people that won't take that shot. And there are people right now sitting in the think tank like, okay, now how can we make it more real? Right now, because of Woe Wo Wo versus Way, there are people, well, now we're going to go out to the Supreme Court and we're going to get prayer in the school. You say, well, aren't you happy? No, because you know what it's going to do? That's going to get the atheists upset. That's going to get the people that hate God upset. Then they're going to turn around and come after us, and they're going to take all our rights away. Because we don't deserve it. Because the average Christian in the Baptist church today don't use their rights to serve Jesus. They serve their rights to serve the flesh. Their horses also shall are swifter than leopards. Leopards can go between 35 to 37 miles per hour. That's quick for back then. But leopards, they are... They're slow. They are slower than their prey. But they look for the weak ones. That they don't have to run so fast. Like the lions. And are more fierce. That means mean. Without mercy. Than the even wolf. Evening, that's dark. You can't, you're not going to see a wolf do what? Be quiet. He ain't going to go, I'm the wolf, I'm the wolf, here I am. I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house. He ain't going to do that. He's going to creep in. Remember what Paul said about these teachers that come and creep in and lay silly women? Their horsemen shall spread themselves. They're going to come in, march in it, and then they're going to make the line bigger. Their horsemen shall come from afar. They shall fly as an eagle that hastens to eat. That is anywhere up to 200 miles per hour. 
Now, that's not an eagle flying. That's an eagle. He's up there, and he sees that little mouse down there. Uh-huh, and then he goes into a dive. And when he's in that dive, he can reach up to 200 miles per hour. That little mouse ain't got a chance. We got hawks here in Florida, and we'll see them do and pick up their prey. They even carry dogs away. They shall come all for violence. Now look, now look at verse 3. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for the spoiling and violence are before me. There's violence all in the land. God says, I heard that. Now you haven't heard it, but it'll be a man named Paul one day. He's going to write, Be not deceived, God's not what mark, whatsoever man soweth, they shall reap. They're coming, they're coming all for violence. You know why all this tragedy is happening in the world? It's the same reason why God said to the eight people, get in that ark, build that ark, preach to the people, gather the animals two by two. There was violence in the land. God says, I repented me that I even made man and be. I'm drowning them all out, but eight and two and sevens of the animals. And we're in violence today. There's violence. Let's don't say, oh, it's the Todd times, you know, the earthquakes and all that. And there's the violence in Habakkuk's time. Now the rapture's coming, but don't take the scripture out of context. There's a war coming against Judah. And Jesus hadn't even come the first time yet. And it'll take many, 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 many years before. Let's see. On a date here. Nebuchadnezzar destroys Jerusalem in 586 BC, I think that is. Where is Habakkuk? All right, Habakkuk predicts in 610, approximately, B.C. There's another 610 years before the first coming of Jesus Christ. And there's been rumors of wars. Israel's going into captivity. You know, you run to Matthew, and it's not the church age. Our signs and season is the church is going to apostate. While the church saying we're getting better, we're great, we're wonderful. And Jesus said to John, hey, write that down. Listen, I don't believe Jesus is coming for the church to rapture because they're, they're, they're the volcano in Japan and the fires in California and the heat wave and the fires in Europe and the, and the, uh, the, the, the tornadoes and the, and the hurricanes and the flood. I don't believe all that. Of Matthew. That's tribulation. Well, I believe Jesus is coming because I just left a great church that had any Bible you want to have but the King James. I just left the church where, where you know, you put a CD in, you do karaoke for Jesus. And they may not call it karaoke. I just left a church. We had a Friday night sing, and all the music, man, you, you get out of there with a Jesus headache. You got to take a couple Holy Spirits and Lay down and get your head back. Well, I, the last one I went to, I'm sitting in the pew, and it's reminding me of being back in the bar day. In the pew, don't we have such a great preacher? We gather money for the preacher. And we, yeah, Revelation chapter 3, my friend. That's men shall be lovers of themselves, bolsters, and 
you know, feminine and all that. And they, the men don't even know what sex they are today. Jesus is coming. Well, what about the earthquake over here? There's been earthquakes, been earthquakes, been earthquakes. So, watch this. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. You don't want anything to do with the east wind when it comes to the Bible. I mean, that'd be like, okay, honey, turn the weather on. What's the weather going to be for today? The guy goes, well, we got an east wind coming. Oh, poop. Is this Monday the 13th by chance? <laughs> the east wind is not good. And they shall gather their captivity as the sand. That's a lot of people. There's a lot of sand over there. They shall scoff at the king. Read Jeremiah. Read the end of Kings. Samuel. D Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, they were royalty. They gave them an operation. No more children for you. Now you sit right there, right there, and this is the Babylonian alphabet. Play it with me. That's a pork sandwich we're putting down before you. You're going to eat it, Jew. By the mercy and grace of God, thou shalt have no idols. At the sound of the, the, the sackbuck, the flute, and all the other answers, I want you to fall down and worship the golden and idol. Not Shadrach, Meshach, and Israel. Well, who do you think you are? You know Daniel the Jew? He's praying. You know Potiphar's wife? You know that Hebrew you bought in here? You bought us in here? The Makas. You know what the Jews were? The Herod and Pilate and all? They were a pain in the butt. They listened to the Jews because the Jews wouldn't live, would not leave them alone. If they didn't crucify Jesus, oh, they would have given them. Roma. Uh -uh. And the princes shall be a scorn unto them, making fun, ridiculing. You know, the, the enemy is going to come in. Well, I'm the king of Judah. <laughs> yeah, king. Look at your land right now. <laughs> hey, king, turn around. You want to see your palace? It's on fire. <laughs> you want to come see your boys? We, you know, we gave them an operation. <laughs> Oh, look at your land. Come on, King, sing it with me. This is my land. This is not your land. From the Mediterranean to the Jordan. This ain't your land. No, 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 no more. Or Come on, King, sing it with me. That's what the scorning. That's what the scoffing. They shall deride every stronghold. Can you imagine the Gentiles, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, when they came to tear that temple down? Can you imagine the ridiculing? Ha! No man's allowed in this room! Hey, look at me, Phil! Look at me, John! Look at me! I'm in the room where they can't be in! Give me that torch! <laughs> They say, light the candle. Hey, give me that torch. I'll light that candle. You say, why didn't God strike them dead? God took the ark and all that and said, I'm out of here. I don't care if Harrison Ford goes looking for the ark. It ain't here with the Nazis. It ain't here on the earth. It's up in heaven, John said.
The next time that, that God had fun with that holy place, Jesus on his way up to heaven. <laughs> you know, John the Baptist's father had a heart attack when, when Gabriel showed up. <laughs> what are you doing in here? There was a king in here and he got leprosy. What are you doing here? Imagine when he walked in there, you know, okay, we got to put the bread out. That's Sabbath day. We got... hey, what's wrong with you? Uh, take a look to the west. What? Look at the veil. Yeah, that's a lovely... Whoa, what am I looking at? <laughs> Quick, get the sewing kit. That was God mocking him. What not? What are you going to do? My son went through the veil. For they shall heap dust and take it. Now that heap and dust means they destroyed the camps, they destroyed the houses. It's like they're sweeping up the mess. <laughs> there might be gold in that dust. Sweep it up, put it in the dustpan, let's take it home, we'll chip through it. Well, wasn't there a time during Solomon that... that Gold and silver was like the rocks in the land. Oh, you forgot about that. Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. Then shall his mind change. And he shall pass over. This is God. And offend. Imagine God offending. God, you offended me. <laughs> Bible says God shall laugh. Imputing this, his power, unto his God, that would be the Chaldean. That's exactly what God did to the Egyptians. How did he do that? Pharaoh? I mean, not Pharaoh. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar boy? Yeah. Get out there, cut the lawn. <laughs> he was original lawn boy. Oh, Belsize, you. you want to have a party? I'll give you a party. Are you ready? You don't have to worry about the hangover in the morning. You ain't going to have a morning. What were they doing, Belsize? They were eating and drinking in the Lord's cups, in the Lord's bowls, in the Lord's spoons, in the Lord's candlestick. Praising the gods of silver, wood, and gold, and plastic, if they had it back then. And the Medes and the Persians came in. Uh, I got something over here I want to read real quick. Where is it? Um... Let's see. So the Chaldean Nebuchadnezzar reigned from 626 to 605 BC, began to dismantle the Assyrian Empire with the help from the Medes and founded the Neo Babylonian Empire. Do you know who destroyed Babylon? The Medes. Do you know who was helping the Medes? The Chaldeans. Chaldeans weren't exactly the Babylonians. They were down south. They were the southerners. And they conquered the Babylonians. And they helped the Medes attack the Assyrians because the Assyrians attacked God's people. So the Chaldeans helped the Medes attack the Babylonians who attacked God's people. Now, isn't that a kick in the butt? 